Yo, what is going on, guys? It is Sly here, and I'm back with another video on Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. And this time, the video is going to be about a topic that I get asked constantly. How do you build this unit in the potential system? Now, the answer that I would normally give the person is how I personally built that sp specific unit, or how I would build that specific unit. And typically, the questions that I will ask them are, okay, does this unit stack with their passive? Does this unit stack with their super? Does this unit just do straight up damage? Does this unit just tank? Like, what do they do? And I tell them from there. Now, this video is to hopefully minimize how much I get asked this question and hopefully answers the question to all of you in the future. So, without further ado, let's get started. Now here, as you can see, I typed out all the normal builds that you would give to the typing of that unit with additionals, criticals, dodge. I even planned it out for you guys so you guys didn't get confused of, wait, 11 what, 15 what, 3 what. So it goes additionals, criticals, dodge. So typically for an agility slash physical unit, you would typically give them 11 additional, 15 critical, and 0 dodge. Unless you want to give them just a little bit of dodge, you would go 8 additional, 15 crit, and 3 dodge. Now for a tech unit slash STR unit, you would typically give them 6 additional, 20 critical, or no dodge. Or again, you want to give a little bit of dodge, 6 additional, 17 crit, 3 dodge. Now for intelligence units, it can go either way of how you build them. It all depends on how they work as a unit. Uh, so you would either give them 15 additionals, 6 crit, or 5 dodge, or 6 additional, 15 crit, 5 dodge. Now, are there exceptions to these rules? Yes, absolutely. There are many of them, which we are about to get into right now. So as you can see, I created a list of a decent amount of units that would maybe break these rules but don't or they would fall into the pool of units that break the rules but they don't change chaos control all right let me use a little bit of chaos control here to stop time what i meant to say instead of the mind fudge that i just hit you all with what i meant to say is that this list consists of both units that break the general rule of thumb and don't break the general rule of thumb Okay, this is a combination list. Okay, that is what I meant to say. And I will explain it better over the course of about the next 10 minutes to save you all a mind fudge and a headache. Okay, please don't hate me. Please, that is why I'm doing this edit. Okay, Shadow, you can bring us back to the video. Chaos Control! So, units like LR Kill and Khalifla, NHL, LR Gohan, they do stack with their supers. And kill and Khalifa stack with their passive, but you generally wouldn't give them more additionals over their criticals just because of the way they work. Kale and Khalifa, they are a unit where their additionals will just proc each other as it goes on in the fight. I believe that's how that works. Do not quote me on that. But as the fight goes on, their additionals will just continue to proc to where the point where you would mostly want criticals from them because they're doing so many supers as it is. So they're a unit that do stack, but you don't break the rule of thumb for them. Same with AGL LR Gohan. I feel that even though he does stack his uh, defense with every super he does, even his 18 and his 12 key, they don't change they're both raising defense by 30 percent because of how he's built and when he transforms he no longer stacks he's a complete and total nuke um so you wouldn't want to change him at all you would want to give him that 11 15 or 8 15 3 build for him just because if he does transform you want him to crit as much as possible so Generally, AGL, LR Gohan, and LR Kalen Khalifa, they don't break the general rule of thumb, but they do stack, if that makes any sense. Now, for a unit like Tech Vegito Blue, you want him to super as much as possible because he is a glass cannon unless he builds up. Even in the uh, Legendary Goku event, at 
uh, in UI Goku, he will get ragdolled by in UI Goku if he is not built up or if he gets supered. Tech Vegeta Blue benefits the most for me personally from additionals. I would rather have him constantly building defense and attack as the fight goes on than have him potentially crit and end it right then and there because in a long event you would rather have him build up. Another unit that actually does break the general rule of thumb is actually Tech Trunks. Tech Trunks benefits the most, for me personally again, by having maximum additionals. Because in his uh, first transform state as Super Saiyan, not in, his, not his enhanced form, just his Super Saiyan form, he's constantly stacking additional and uh, not additional. So I'm sorry, attack and defense as he supers each time. So for me personally, I would build him with more additional than criticals. Plus, in his enhanced form, uh, he has super effective against all allies. In his enhanced form, he has uh, super effective against all allies. So having him crit outside of that form isn't really necessary per se. You would rather have him stacking constantly, in my opinion. Uh, another unit that does break the general rule of thumb is STR Cell. STR Cell does also stack his attack and defense every time he supers. And in long fights, because he fits on the Kamehameha category, he can have AGL LR Gohan transform into his Super Saiyan 2 state because he's an android ally on the team. So having him constantly stacking attack and defense just so he can tank and get you further in a long fight like L uh, Legendary Goku event, I feel personally he benefits more from additionals than criticals. Another unit that I feel personally uh, works the best with maxed out additionals is actually Super Saiyan uh, in Future Gohan. Because he uh, constantly raises his attack with each super, he doesn't uh, raise defense, he just raises attack. But because of his passive, he mitigates damage by 58%, he can actually tank decently well in the uh, Legendary Goku event. Wow, I just brain farted. <laughs> Excuse me. But he can actually tank pretty well in the Legendary Goku event. So, for me personally, I think I would give him a little bit more additional than critical. Uh, would he fall under the 15 additional 6 crits built for an intelligence unit? Maybe a little bit, maybe you could bounce him out with 12 additionals and 9 crits, but maybe giving him the little bit extra additionals wouldn't hurt too much. But yeah, I'm not going to go over every single unit on this list, but there are two that I will mention right now. The physical Super Saiyan Blue Goku that you see, and the tech Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta that you see. Those two got an awakening on global, and I'm really waiting for them on JP because I've heard from people that have used them on global. In the Legendary Goku event, they can form an immortal, quote unquote, an immortal rotation. And if that's the case, I want to test them out really badly. Because I'm really more now about defense than I am attack, because I would rather tank an attack and dish out like decent slash good enough damage rather than deal a buttload of damage but also take a buttload of damage like i would rather have a good tank than a glass cannon if that makes any sense now one unit that i really want to touch on for this that breaks the zero rule of thumb is actually agl uh gogeta blue because of how agl gogeta blue is you really want him to have maxed out additionals. You want him to have that 20 additional so badly just because of how he works. Uh, in his Super Saiyan state, he is super effective against all allies, so he works like any other normal Super Gogeta would. Not Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, he doesn't have that, but STR Gogeta, Int Gogeta, and LR Gogeta, when transformed, all have that super effective against uh, all types in his passive when he's Super Saiyan. 
So when he transforms into Super Saiyan Blue, he does criticals outright. No matter who he's facing, it is a critical attack. Super, normal, no matter what, it's a critical. So you want him to additional as much as possible so you can output as much damage as possible. Plus, uh, in blue, he has a 50% chance to dodge. 50% chance to dodge. And for me personally, that 50% that 50% chance has kicked in more than uh, Mastered Ultra Instinct's 70%. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. But yeah, Gogeta Blue is the one that breaks the general rule of thumb the most because of how he's built. So yeah, that's going to mostly be it for the video. Uh, I hope you all did enjoy the video. Hopefully you guys found it uh, informative and helpful. So yeah, if you found the video helpful and informative, or you just like the content, please give it a like. If you guys haven't already, make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.